This is one of my many challenges climbing epi covered tree is epi in the tool clip, the epi up my nose, in my ear, round my rope. But here's the thing, epicormic, there's a real purpose and a function to it. Trees have a language and part of that language is understanding epicormic growth. There's three forms. And part of my job is understanding when I'm pruning a tree, which of those forms can I retain and which can I remove? I'm going to be talking with Tom Hill in this video who taught the Vet Cert course and he's going to help me understand a little bit more about this and I'd really love to share that with you. Tom, I'm really grateful to you. You um, were one of the teachers on the Vet Cert course and you really opened my eyes to looking at epicormic growth in a new way. Can you share with fellow arborists a little bit about epi? Traditionally in the arb industry, we think of epi in a negative way. So maybe it gets in the way of us climbing a tree. Sometimes it's because of aesthetic reasons. But if we think about trees and where they've come from in their evolution and natural processes, then trees rely on epicormic growth for longevity. And actually we've got a really good example. This ancient oak tree behind us here is in the multiple hundreds of years old and its entire crown is made up from what were epicormic shoots and growth that have now formed a secondary canopy and essentially a load of young oak trees living on this huge hulk of an ancient tree. And I think there's a role for everyone in the arb industry to play when it comes to protecting epicormic moving forwards.